All right, welcome back everybody. Here's part three of the finishing samples for us to look at for visual development and environment design. At the end of part two, we finished looking at John's work and now we're gonna take a look at Paul Felix. We get into what I call, I look at Paul Felix and I look at his work. We looked at some early Paul Felix, right? When he's doing environments. Now what happens when you take Paul Felix, he's doing script work for a show, he's introducing character, he's introducing mood with tone and color, and he's adhering to the key sequences of his script, you, became, you become a master storyteller. Okay, absolutely. I mean, look at this. This is beautiful. When you get into this type of stuff, and then Paul just started to pretty much take off and explode at this point. Now he's doing full characters, posing with storytelling and a magic word called a narrative. I mentioned I'm writing four digital illustration classes this summer to add to our program here that I want to teach. Someone asked me here, argued with me a little bit, another faculty member and said, well, what do you need four classes for? You already have classes in Photoshop. And I was like, classes in Photoshop and digital painting are based on technique. They're based on applying technique over and over and over to learn to master the technique to where you create your own techniques. The difference with illustrating is now you're introducing a narrative to the story and that's night and day right there. That separates out beginners and mediocre artists to the upper extreme echelon. Paul Felix is that upper echelon. This guy has the ability to, to stage characters, environments, work in perspective, set up scenes. If you want to look at your work and you want to try to ascertain yourself to a higher position in life, boom, look at his work. If you can't draw a character like that, then you better start going to figure drawing meetings and start looking at characters. And if you can't draw an environment like that, then you better take environment design class. And if you can't color like that, then you better go start looking, take a, a color theory class. Find your weakness and make yourself better. Right? I'm not expecting you in this class to go into full color. Black and white is fine for your environments, or even just even light tone, something to separate it out. But I want to show you what you can achieve and what is the master level. This is something that m me as an artist right now, I look at this and I want to achieve by Dan. I want to achieve this. I want to become better. I want to get to this level as an artist. This is one of my growth standards. But I made the decision like, you know, hey, maybe I, I can still do freelance, and maybe go back to the industry. What if I take this knowledge and apply it to my own line of children's books, my own properties? Why not? Absolutely. People do that. You have artists like Peter Deceive, okay? Peter Deceive, excuse me, and a ton of other great artists. Uh, William Joyce. And um, I was thinking of the other guy. Who's the guy that illustrated Chris Van Allsburg? Polar Express. Amazing designers, right? Okay? Look at that. Ah, you just see this and you're like, man. Paul's too good, right? He's amazing. <laughs> Look at that beautiful stuff. Look at the posing of the character and my mother-in-law chasing that character, right? You know? It's gorgeous. <laughs> it's one of my favorite all-time pieces right there. Look at the cools against the warms. Look at the staging of it. Those of you in my environment design class, I've already posted up my lectures talking about the importance of one-point perspective. This is the shot in the scene where the, the key character, long hair girl, what's her name? I know, I don't want to say her name though. You guys say it. T -t -t Tangle, okay. Where she comes up, right? Princess Mononoke, I'm just kidding. Where she comes up, right? She's standing here and she looks up and she finds the truth out about where she came from, about her parents. That's huge. So when I talked about pivotal scenes, that is a pivotal scene right there that has to incorporate some form of a very, very important emotional impact to the audience. What is that going to be? So some of you can draw this right now. Then you've got to learn how to add tone and light it. Then eventually you will get to the point where you can start using color. But you cannot skip those steps because if you skip them and go right to color, you're going to come right back being flat on your face being like, I don't understand linear composition. I don't understand tone, value, and lighting. You have to follow things in a particular order. Okay? All right? More Paul Felix beautifulness. I love that knife right there. Like the guy with the gun, the guy playing cards. This guy's got a gun. All right? More beautiful work. I think this was American Dog, which became Bolt. 
was part of the name change. That happens quite often where studios work on something, okay? Next, we jump forward to looking at another fantastic master in the world of designing, okay? His name is Dylan Cole. Dylan Cole should be your the epitome of what you look at in terms of if you want to be a concept artist to work in games or non-animation related like live action film, all right? Dylan Cole is that guy. He understands Maya. He works in 3D. He knows how to do plates. He knows how to do backdrops, backdrop paintings, and he knows how to do conceptual art, okay? So look at this wide angle shot. Look at how inviting that is to the viewer. So if you're working on a particular film project and there's a giant city somewhere out there, and the great thing is, is part of this is multiple parts of this is photo bashed. You too, my friend, for a small fee, you can become a great artist, right? There's no fee. All it is is Google and pulling up a bunch of images and blending stuff together and look at that. Dylan Cole is without a doubt a master at doing this. He has the ability to take images and blend them together, right? Which, I got to make this comment, when I was working at Big Idea, I worked with a couple of different painters and a great exercise one of the painters told me to do is take a realistic photo and delete half of it and then paint the rest of it in, making it look like the same image. Great thing to do. Taught me a lot about values and temperaments and detail, right? That right there is a beautiful piece of LA in the future, right? No, I don't know what it's for, but it's something that I just grabbed off Dylan's site. It's a beautiful piece. But do you see the photo blend happening there? And do you see how photo blend contributes to move you towards becoming a dedicated conceptual designer? Okay? Yes, Dylan can draw. Yes, he knows tone. Yes, he knows values. He knows all those other things. Okay? Opening, establishing shot for Avatar. So Dil Dylan's ability to work in realism and his understanding of how to work in 3D using Maya and being able to, to place textures and plates on top of each other and render them out, come back in and paint on top of that, makes him extremely valuable to a film production. And again, nice story specific wide angle shot here. Okay, absolutely gorgeous. All right, look at that shot. Man, look at the look at those characters. Look at those the animals there with the characters looking up. And almost it's like that rock just this giant boulder almost wants to fall off, but remember, we're talking about a civilization that has floating rocks, right? <laughs> Trevor's all laughing. Hey, I didn't write the script, all right? I, I know. I always had a thing with floating rocks. But anyway, still a cool movie, right? Beautiful, beautiful artwork. You got to give the guy credit for what he did. He had to bring together what, you know, Cameron and the art director and whoever else was involved. I don't even know who the art director was on this project. I don't know if it was Dylan or other related people or whoever the production designer was. He had to meet their visions. Remember we talked about that. You sit in a meeting and you have to know what their vision is of the movie. If their vision is to have a futuristic world where people are riding these funky unicorn looking horses around and there's like floating rocks, then you have to do your best to come up with that vision. You don't have the option to say, nah, sorry, I don't like that. I only like drawing people in mech suits. Sorry, I only work in purple because it's my favorite color. No, that doesn't apply here. Okay, go down to the EDD office, Employment Development Department, Unemployment Office of California, right? Uh-uh. Okay, look at this. How do you do that? Better get a bunch of waterfall reference, get some bird brushes, get some moons, maybe take a render or two, do some overlap with some foreground elements, bring it all together, paint on top, do some minimizing, boom, you're done. Okay? Great stuff, Dylan Cole, such a talented guy. Love seeing this. The great thing is, is that everyone in this room can look up like base pictures. This would be another great photo, another photo shop assignment. Go look up photographer's work of like LA and certain big cities and then come in and have to transform that into a mega city. Wouldn't that be a great project? That'd be very cool. Great way to learn more about digital painting. Look at that, another one of my favorite pieces, right? That's cool. Yeah, this cool, like, Frank Geary-style house over there. People on the beach. Look at that. And you have, look at the multiple sunsets. I want to go to that place, man. That's a place of happiness right there. To sit on the beach and fish. Beautiful wide-angle shot, okay? Look at the sun. Look at the light coming back into part of this. Look at the, the atmospheric perspective. Beautiful piece, okay? 
All right, more beautiful work from Dylan. Sorry, I'm going to try to speed it up a little bit because I know we're, we just hit the hour mark and we have 20 more slides left. Okay, so more beautiful Dylan Cole. So the purpose of why I wanted to add on the last 40 slides is I want to show you what is at the end of the tunnel. I want to show you what is when that carrot of eagerness and, and want and, and dedication is hanging in front of your face. I want to show you what's at the other end if you go for that character. Uh, excuse me, that character. If you go for that, that carrot, okay? You know, imagine a fishing pole hanging over you and you're running forward trying to grab that carrot. That's what's at the end of the tunnel after your practice and your dedication to, as an artist. It's to get to this level to be able to create this type of work here, okay? By the way, look at this. I love how this is sort of photo bashed. At the same time, it has some of the characters that he's painted in there with light. It has sort of an animation feel to it, something different, something fun. It's gorgeous, okay? Next, <laughs> alumni, alumni from here, from Fullerton College, also fellow alumni who I had numerous classes with here with Marshall Vandruff, also at Cal State Fullerton with Don Lagerberg and a couple other instructors, the amazing Justin Sweet, okay? Justin Sweet is another master. He knows composing, he knows value. Um, Justin Sweet, along with Vance, they went out, they worked at a couple of local game companies, they worked for eight to 10 years, they did nothing but paint all the time. They worked at Interplay. They gathered a ton of experience. They built themselves up into becoming the artists that they are over time. They went to events. They promoted their work. Self-promotion was huge, right? They go to Comic-Con, other events. Now, by the way, Justin Sweet just lives right down here. He's local, lives in Placentia. I have a cell phone number on my phone. I could call him real quick. Justin, we're looking at your work. No, super nice guy, really talented, amazing. So is Vance. We'll get to Vance in just a second here. But I wanted to sort of wrap up part of this lecture by sharing their work with you, you know. In some weird way, I was talking to that professor I mentioned, Bob Miller. He made a comment talking about knowing different people. And I realized I've been sort of lucky with my path of what I've done in the industry to sort of be in, in the middle. I've always been in the middle of everything with friendships, with numerous guys. I know a bunch of guys that wouldn't hang out with each other, but I'm the middle factor that makes them all sort of come together, right? It's the same thing, you know, getting the opportunity to work in animation, getting to know people like Justin and Vance, being around these people and knowing them from taking classes, watching everyone build their own talents and their skill sets, and look at where they are now, you know? The super duper talented, amazing artists that have the ability to just, you know, paint whatever they want and just produce beautiful stuff, okay? So, Justin, you know, some people used to say, yeah, he's the next Frazetta. And I used to, you know, make some comments. I remember once in a painting class, someone making that comment. You paint just like Frazetta, man. I'm like, dude, you better be quiet because Justin's sort of a big buff dude and he will kick your ass, right, if you talk like that. But the whole point of that was that, you know, I understand where they're making that comment, but I'm like, dude, this guy's just starting. He's hitting his prime now. He's, you know, he's 45, 47. He has his whole, he has another 15, 20 years of painting still. And now he's getting into characters and posing and environments and storytelling. He's just scratching the surfaces what he, of what he's going to do. And somebody had the nerve back then to be like, oh, you're just another Frazetta? No way. He's way beyond what Frazetta was. Frazetta stopped at a certain point. Justin's killing it right now. He's going forward. This painting was done back in 09. You know? There's another painting for Green Lantern done back in 09, too. Guy's getting more and more amazing with everything that he does. I wish I could just go into a studio and go, "Hey, forget that non-disclosure agreement you signed working for 20th, you know, 20th Century Fox or you know, or, or DreamWorks or whoever. Let me see the work you're doing now. It's probably amazing, but he has to wait till the production airs, right? All right. Here's another alumni from here, Vance Kovacs, super cool guy, very friendly, amazing artist. Look at this stuff, you know, beautiful." Absolutely gorgeous. Now, if that doesn't inspire you, looking at, I mean, look at that. Look at that beast right there, you know? This is a weight stuff that he's doing here. I mean, it's funny because you look at all these different, that's, that's a, remember Batman? Recent edition of Batman, see the Batman suit on him? Right? Remember the fight sequence where he's throwing Superman around? That's what that piece is for right there. Vance is on every major you know, sci-fi based action adventure movie right now, period. Okay? That look familiar? 
300 series Spartans we got Sparta okay look at all this it's gorgeous okay Chronicles of Riddick how many more awesome movies do you get to do Vance he's amazing right great designer amazing painter and then something else there no attitude no pompousness he's just a normal guy he's just a friendly guy to talk to he's very cool that's the thing that's what bugs me one thing that a pet peeve of mine is I hate people that become good in the industry and they develop this this attitude like they're like they're excuse my French but like their shit doesn't stink right I'm done with that because there's so many other artists that are so talented and they're so super nice you know just all get along as human beings in the world and all treat each other with respect and remember this one golden thing is the one artist that might be down 10 years later is going to be up and be at the top of that that upper echelon right because they whoever works the hardest for it gets it sorry this piece is so digital it's lacking in resolution that's the only piece I could find I wanted to show you some of the work he did for Thor and then there's another piece there that he rendered out right a little bit of photo bash in the background there that's pretty cool another great piece okay there's another piece where um, I remember Vance was when he was uh, one of our guest speakers here talking for a little bit he was talking about like their first impression of like reading that script and they're on a, a, a rainbow bridge <laughs> you know like rainbow you know bridge riding horses you know anyway beautiful stuff right okay more beautiful 300 work look at that amazing gorgeous okay jungle book all right see the progression here working on lots of Disney movies here okay amazing conceptual artist another great piece that's uh what's that one called it's the one with the chimps and the what's the fish of the planet of the apes but wasn't there another title after that yeah rise of apes or something whatever right so planet of the apes series right this brings us to our last side folks which is where I just wanted to say thanks to Sparth, Armand, Paul, John, Michael Spooner, Dylan Cole, Justin Sweet, and Vance, because you know I'm grabbing their work from online sites and being able to share it with you guys. And I didn't ask for their permission, but I think they would all be pretty cool with it. That's why everything I put up on YouTube, I don't do it for profit. I do it to promote, you know, and, and try to inspire you guys as students and other designers. And I think they would all pretty much feel the same way. So I would highly recommend if you get a chance. You know, Armand just had a book that came out. Paul Felix doesn't have anything out there. John Navarez is always selling um, uh, books at, at CTN and other related events. I heard he's working on his own book. I think Michael is too. Sparth has three amazing books. I would highly recommend you go out and buy. I have all three. I love looking at them. I'm constantly in them, always learning something new. Um, Dylan Cole, I mean, I don't think he has to, I don't think he has any books out or anything. Um, Justin Sweet and Vance just have a book that came out on Kickstarter that they put together. Um, and they'll probably be selling some more copies of that, so I'd look into that work. So anyway, thanks, guys, and hope you enjoy this lecture, and talk to you soon. Bye.